Welcome back, fellow trophy hunters and platinum enjoyers. Today, we are taking on Plague Tale Innocence. So there's about 17 trophies tied to the story of Plague Tale Innocence. I'm just going to kind of give like a brief overall description of like the story, but I'm not going to go into like really big details of it. So anyway, a Plague Tale Innocence is a gripping and emotional journey set in 14th century France during the height of the Black Death. The game follows the story of Amicia and her younger brother Hugo, who must navigate a world devastated by disease, war, and supernatural forces. The journey begins in a small village where Amicia and Hugo live in a sheltered life on their family estate. However, their peaceful existence is shattered when the Inquisition arrives, seeking Hugo for unknown reasons. Forced to flee from their home, the siblings must embark on a perilous journey to find safety and unravel the mysteries surrounding Hugo's existence. So I know, I just gotta ask, why are these pig's balls so freaking big? What the heck, are pig's balls usually that big? And I saw that, I was like, what is going on? What a design choice here. We've only been in charge of our brother for not even five minutes in the whole story, and we almost get captured. But thankfully, the mama bear comes to the rescue and knocks out the guard. And now, we travel with her for a little bit. And here's one of the biggest gameplay mechanics in the game, is that you have to hold your brother's hand throughout the whole journey, pretty much. If you stray too far from your brother, he has a panic attack, and you will alert the guards. Also, I got stuck on this wall for a little bit, and I was like, what the heck? This is like the only glitch slash bug I really experienced in the whole game. It's actually a pretty polished game, and actually looks really good. But a lot of the beginning of the game is you just hiding from guards and distracting them. But it gets a lot more intense later on. Speaking of intense, one of the more intense scenes of the game is when one of the Inquisition guards comes charging towards you and your mother tells you to go find Laurentis to go find a cure for your brother or help out whatever illness that he's got. After Amicia is trying to convince her mother to come, she says that we don't need her and she needs to press on without us because she needs to help the servants of the estate. But then we're left to believe that Amicia's mom is dead. Now with the Inquisition hot on our tails and trying to capture us, we need to just run as fast as we can to get away from them. And with only one option ahead of us, we jump like Olympic divers into the water to get away from them. Our first destination is a nearby town, which has been ravaged by the plague. The streets are filled with corpses, creating a haunting and eerie atmosphere. Amicia and Hugo must carefully navigate through the town, using stealth and strategy to avoid the soldiers patrolling the streets. As we make our way through the town, Amicia and Hugo encounter other survivors who have formed smaller communities and abandoned buildings and churches. These encounters provide moments of respite and allow the siblings to learn more about the world that they inhabit. They also begin to uncover the truth about Hugo's unique abilities, which seem to be tied to the supernatural forces at play. The journey continues through various landscapes, including dense forest, war-torn battlefields, and decaying castles. Along the way, Amicia and Hugo face numerous challenges from solving complex puzzles to outsmarting dangerous enemies. The gameplay mechanics focus on stealth, as the siblings must avoid detection and use their wits to overcome obstacles. Throughout their journey, Amicia and Hugo forge a deep bond, relying on each other for survival. Amicia acts as a protector and guide for a younger brother, while Hugo's innocence and vulnerability remind Amicia of the importance of a hope in a world ravaged by darkness. Throughout their journey, players gradually uncover the truth about Hugo's unique abilities. It is revealed that Hugo possesses a rare bloodline that makes him a target for the Inquisition, who believes that his blood can hold the key to the Vital conquering the world. I was going to give props to this game, because the rats, you know, if I see one rat, I'm like, whatever, I'll kick that thing across the goddamn field, you know what I'm saying? But when you see a horde of rats ripping through somebody, it's like, oh my god, okay, this is actually kind of scary. Like, these rats will definitely mess you up. After evading the Inquisition and going through various mountains of rats, we finally make it to Laurentis's farm. However... We find out that Laurentis has the plague. However, he has a young pupil in Lucas, who is more than willing to help us along in our journey. He also teaches us how to use alchemy, so now we have another thing under our disposal. Alright, here I am going into depth with the story when I said I wasn't going to in the beginning. Anyway, if you guys have made this far into the video, if you give me a like, subscribe, leave a comment on how you feel about the game, that'd be great. Um... Yeah, I'm just going way too far into the story now. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it at this. Just know that 
you should play this game, especially since the PS Plus game free is a sequel to this game, and that's why I decided to play this game before I played the sequel. Um, now I'm going to go over some of the trophies in the game instead of just keep going over the story. I mean, if you guys do like the more of the story, like in the video of me going over it, let me know in the comments and I'll just start doing that too, or like figuring out a better way to do the content that I'm making. Because I'm still pretty new to this and I'm trying my best. You know, some videos I feel like I do really well and other ones I'm like, ah! So, you know, I'm still trying to feel my way into it and see exactly what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong and what I can improve on. Which, I mean, if you guys have any suggestions or anything, please let me know. Because uh, I just want to get better at it make these videos more entertaining to you guys in the end. That's really all I want to do. I have fun making the videos and, I mean, honestly, I love playing video games. So, I'm just trying to, like, I guess show my passion by doing like this plus i love trophy hunting like i think you get more out of the games by doing the whole trophy list and sometimes too it gives you like a different way to play the game or maybe something you didn't think of doing and honestly too like when you're on a budget and you can't afford like 500 games sometimes it's just nice to kind of try to see everything you can do in the game or 100 percent the game or you know what i'm saying so like i said like if you do guys want me to do like more of like a story recap or something like that just let me know in the comments but anyway i'm gonna just post the 17 trophies i'm not gonna do each one like i usually do for like 17 dings because <laughs> that'd be insane but um i'm just gonna start here with like 17 out of however many trophies this game has and we'll uh go over the trophies now thank you guys in this game, there's going to be like little side quests or side activities you can do to unlock certain trophies. In the first chapter, one of the first trophies that you'll get is breaking six pots with your sling as target practice, which even if you miss, there's like an endless supply of rocks, so it's not a big deal. But once we hit all six, we earn ourselves a trophy. There's a total of 50 collectibles throughout the game. Well, 55 if you count the alchemist cards, but we'll go over that after we talk about these collectibles. So there's different curiosities that you'll find throughout the game, but thankfully this game has like a chapter select and it'll let you know what collectibles you miss in each chapter or which ones you uh, need to get in the chapters. And there's also flowers and gifts that you need to get throughout the whole game. Um, so even if you missed it like throughout the game, if you just go to the chapter select, you'll see which ones you're missing and as long as you pick them up, it counts. As long as I think it saves. But doing all this earns, a, earns us a total of five more trophies for just finding all these collectibles. It's over now. Lady Daffodil will watch over us. Now you'll find these alchemist cards kind of just like hidden throughout the world. But first when you get it's pretty free. It's not hard to get. You can see it right there in front of us. Uh, we just do a little thing right there, explode some rats, and we're good to go. But you're going to find five of these in there, which these are great to find resources to upgrade your equipment. Which, that's going to be the last trophy we go over, is upgrading your equipment, because it's ridiculous, and I'm already getting upset just thinking about it. But anyway, yes, you'll find five of these alchemist cards, and they'll unlock you another trophy. And, being the good sister that we are, one of the trophies is getting Hugo something to eat. So in the second chapter, you will find this apple tree. Just go ahead and steal one of them delicious apples, give it to the boy, and we earn ourselves a trophy. One of the other chapter-related trophies you can get is finding Hugo in the apple orchard without him spotting you. If Hugo spots you, you're going to have to reset or just play this, replay this chapter later on. Um, you just go through the apple trees before he catches you. If he does see you, then you just restart the chapter, but it's nothing hard. It's actually kind of cute when you scare them. Now, after scurrying through the battlegrounds, you're going to notice that there's a lone soldier way up there and there's this torch. You have an option here. I didn't realize you did have an option. I just thought we were just trying to get through past all these freaking rats, man. Look at them all. Which is actually really impressive how many rats are actually in this game. But if you're an idiot like me and didn't realize you could actually save this guy, I just let all the rats just freaking devour him. And then I was like, oh wait. I was supposed to save him because it's for a trophy. So what you have to do here is not kill him with all the rats. You want to use your uh, alchemist or alchemy and fling your slingshot 
and set it on fire so the guy is saved. And once you do that, you actually are rewarded with a trophy. And throughout your journey in Plague Tale Innocence, you'll be able to craft like different alchemies. There'll be like one where you can set stuff on fire, one where you can get rid of fire, some to use like a some type of potion to smash on a guard's face to knock them out. But after you've done 100 crafting, which honestly it might seem like a lot, but some of the items that you're crafting, you're crafting like two, three, sometimes four of the same item every time you craft. So this will just come naturally through your playthrough. You, you, this isn't anything you're gonna have to grind for. Like I got it, I think halfway through the game, and I was like, "Oh wow, surprise me!" Like um, Roderick here is gonna give us um, a new crafting recipe right here, and that counts towards it too. As soon as you start making this stuff, so it's pretty like, like I said, it's not a grind for this one. Honestly, there's not too many grindy achievements besides upgrading all your equipment. But we'll, like I said earlier in the video, we'll go through that uh, in a little bit. But yeah, once you craft 100 items, you earn yourself another trophy. A lot of these last few trophies are going to go over chapter Pacific trophies. Um, this one is when you finally reach the castle that you, Hugo, Melly, and Lucas reach. Um, while you're following Hugo down the staircase, there is a tomb at the bottom of the floor. Go down there, pay your respects, and you earn yourself another trophy. Now, this trophy definitely earns its name the hard way. Because there's an easy way right there. You see that door we just passed? If we go in there, we could enter the church, and we wouldn't even have to worry about anything. But no, we have to do it the hard way and take down these two guards. Which doesn't sound super difficult, but they have shields. They're annoying. They kind of like don't follow you that much so I kind of just lured him down here to like where the rats were and I used the rats to my advantage to uh, take him out it was just kind of like annoying to get him to come down here but overall it wasn't too too difficult but like I said the trophy is called the hard way and they are not wrong this definitely is the harder way than going about for this trophy this game really loves you to save the enemy in this one, we have to save these two guards that are being surrounded from rats. With also us not getting killed by the rats in the same time. But there's one guard over there, you see him? So all you want to do pretty much is just make sure that the rats don't get him and you don't take out the source of light that's protecting him. Um, you can be a jerk and do that, you just won't get the trophy. Now the only one that made this one difficult is one, I had no idea where to go, and once the guard's uh, radar filled up, it was automatically a game over. So what I was trying to do is, because I didn't want to have to replay this chapter later just to get the flower, is was I was trying to get the flower, and I was trying to follow this guy into the place, which it was in the guide that I was reading, it said it was like nearly impossible, but once you actually like got the route down, and you run there, you can actually, too, distract uh, Nicholas. To get him to walk towards you then run around him and then get through the door that's what i ended up doing so it's not as hard as it made it seem in the guide it's just i guess making sure you're routing making sure you're like steadily running but not like getting too much attention to yourself and also like i said knowing like the layout of the area um overall i guess it, none of these trophies are actually really too too difficult i mean i'm sure if i were to do like a no death run or no, not getting caught run, maybe this game would have been more difficult. I mean, I see why it's like, a, I think it's like a 2 or 3 out of 10 on PlayStation. Like, it's not hard, it's just some stuff's irritating, and the worst part, well, it's coming up pretty soon when we're going to talk about the upgrades, but um, overall this one wasn't too bad. And once we get through that door, the trophy is ours. I went up here because I was just exploring, um, but once you got through that door before he gets there, the trophies are. I was just like a little confused because I didn't want to um, go through the wrong door and not get the trophy. So yeah, once you get through the door, even if he's not there, the trophy still pops for you. But not like I said, it wasn't too too difficult. It's just a matter of like two not knowing where you're actually supposed to go. And pop. This one's kind of heartbreaking. Once you get back to the town that Roderick's from, where you're making your final assault on the uh, Inquisition, you'll see this little door, you'll slap it open with your rock, you'll walk over there and Roderick will be like, this area's looking, you know, kind of familiar, and 
he at first he doesn't want to go, but then once you go through there, he instantly recognizes it, and you'll see what happens. He'll run past you, and then you just gotta go follow him. It's his father's forge. Which, you know how much his dad meant to him throughout the game when you play it. This game actually does a really good job with its characters. That's why I'm like, should I talk more about everything? But I kind of don't want to ruin it for everybody, you know what I mean? But I guess in Platinum videos, you go into that knowing that there's spoilers. And that's why I was asking earlier, too. It's like, you know, if you guys want me to discuss more of the story, I'm more than willing to. But anyway, another trophy is unlocked for us. We're getting towards the end, fellas. So... This is the worst trophy, in my opinion, in this whole entire game, because there's no new game plus. So all your equipment that you've upgraded so far, if you start a new game, it's going to just go back to its like beginning um, stages. So it's not going to carry over if you start a new game. If you pick any chapter in the game and your equipment's upgraded to that, it will stay at that. So if I didn't upgrade my swing to like the full amount of like the upgrade or whatever, it won't like upgrade any further than that even if i leave the chapter and i start it over um so i found out that there's a glitch that you can do and i was like you know normally i try not to like do like exploitives like that but i'm like i don't want to just replay the game after i just beat it just to um upgrade just the sling in one run through and then my equipment in another playthrough like don't get me wrong, I, I love this game. It's actually a lot of fun and I had a great time with it. But I just did not want to commit another, what, you know, 12 hours, maybe 13 hours to just upgrade that and then maybe potentially having to do that again. So I found out that there's this glitch and I'll run it through with you guys. So when you get to the chapter select, go to chapter 10. Exit to the, men, the main menu. You're going to re-enter it through chapter select. It needs to be chapter select. When the chapter title appears, you want to hold down the touchpad. And then when Amicia finishes talking, you can make sure that you did it right because you can start walking with your um, with the menu opening. Then you want to press and hold R1 to bring up the ammo crafting menu. You can let go of the touchpad now. But the upgrade menu should be open now. So you want to use the left stick and select the upgrade that you already have. And then you want to start crafting the ammo. But before you craft the ammo, you want to move the um, cursor that you already have the upgrade to. You want to move that to the upgrade that you don't have. And that will upgrade it. Honestly, like I said, I really don't like doing glitches like this. Um, but I just didn't want to play through the game like another two times just because I didn't want I didn't have all the upgrades that I needed just for that specific requirement you know like if there's a new game plus I wouldn't have mind doing it honestly because I like I said I had fun doing it but for me to have to start like a whole new playthrough I mean I guess I could have chapter selected to three so I wouldn't have to play like the first two chapters because you don't be able to upgrade to like later but just knowing like that right there, it kind of just ruined it for me. And I was like, no man, like I'm just going to, also you have to make sure that you can actually craft this. See like, you'll see like through this where I wasn't doing it right. I was on the part that I needed to upgrade. So it wasn't doing it, but I ended up figuring out what I was doing wrong. It was cause I wasn't on the upgrade beforehand. And then when you craft, you have to, before you finish crafting, you want to move it to the left. I'm trying to explain it as good as I can. I mean, if you guys want me to, I can just do a separate video on this, but I'm sure enough people have made YouTube videos on this where it's not a issue to like look up. I mean, maybe I could just uh, pump out some more content, but I mean, you guys just let me know in the comments what you think. Um, but overall, I mean, Play Tale is a great game. I'd recommend it to anybody. One of the only reasons why I was playing it was because the uh, second or the sequel, I should say, was one of the free uh, PS games this month. So I was like, well, I always wanted to play the first one, so why don't I just, you know, play the first one? The second one's free, so I don't even have to buy the sequel. Um, and I'm glad I did, honestly. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed my time with the game. It was, it was solid. The story was really good, surprisingly. I thought it was gonna be kind of like, just, you know, boring, whatever. 
And the gameplay in the beginning is pretty boring, I'd say. I mean, all you're doing is hiding around. But once you actually start unlocking some of the alchemy and all this other stuff, the game just kicks it up to a whole nother notch. I mean, I, like, I appreciate the directions that they were going with in the story. Honestly, you never knew who was safe. Like, towards the end, um, spoiler warnings, everybody, in case you haven't played this game or beat it. But, like, when Roderick dies and then um, Melanie's brother dies, like, that shit was, like, actually, like, kind of, like, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't actually see that coming. And it was, oh, also when her mom's still alive, like, what? Like, that shit blew my mind. Oh, then I finally ended up figuring it out here. Um, but, yeah, it was surprisingly a great game, man. I'd recommend this game to anybody. Um, and I'll probably end up doing the sequel, and I'll probably end up doing... More than likely, I'll do a video on the sequel, too. Also, if you guys, like, have, like, any suggestions or games you want me to cover or any games you're looking forward to seeing, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm willing to pretty much play mostly anything. Um, and I'm just trying my best to get better at doing this stuff. Um, so, like I said earlier, too, if you have, like, any critiques or any suggestions um for me to get better at doing this i am all ears uh just don't like tear me apart like too bad i mean i can take criticism but just don't be like a dick um i guess now i'm kind of just ranting at this point but yeah man the overall great game you can still see that i'm struggling with this too oh god i should have just well i mean i'll end up cutting some of this out anyway where you guys will see where i actually did it but um if you guys did make it to the end, I uh, really do appreciate it. If you did make it this far in the end, you know what? Just write rats in the comments. I mean, I guarantee you probably nobody will make it to the end. But hey, you know what? If you are one of the select few people who did, I really do appreciate you. And yeah, I mean, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Be safe. Hope you find $5 on the ground. Hope life's treating you well, honestly. And yeah, at this point, I'm just rambling. But we did get the Platinum Trophy in this. Honestly, not too bad of a game. And if you're one of those people that like um, doing like the cross saves or whatever to like get it on the PS4 and PS5, you can do it with this game. And there we go. It's finally starting to work. But I hope I explained it well enough. And like I said too, if you want me to do a video on this, on like a more detailed version on how to do this glitch, just let me know. Um, but I think enough people have probably made a video about this that you guys want me to. Too. I thought about adding the boss fight at the end just to be like, look at this, this is crazy, but maybe I'll let you guys experience that for yourselves. But, like I said, I do appreciate you guys watching and the uh, few people, if anybody who did make it to the end of this video, keep on going, soldier. Each day is a new journey, and you're gonna knock it out of the park. You're all beautiful people. Thank you. Ah, screw it. Let's throw in some of this final boss fight. So, not like he was like too frustrating, but you have to watch out for his like rat attack, which also I wish like the game kind of explained better like how to actually fight him. Because like, yeah, obviously I'm trying to avoid the rats and I don't want to get by the rats, but there's like some points when you get like into his like other phases and stuff, you're like, wait, how do I even like attack him or how do I avoid his rats? Because there'll be a point where he like does like that long attack. Also, all you have to do is hit him three times and he's dead. Um, so he has like three different, I wouldn't even say they're phases, just three hits and he's dead. He'll just do like different type of attacks. But he'll do like the long arm attack, but then also rats will come out of the ground to like stop you from where you're going. And sometimes you'll get trapped, but you can't move because if you move too far, then the rats will get you. So I don't know, maybe if I was missing more to this than what there really is, but you know, it was just kind of, it was frustrating. Like it wasn't even hard, it was just like, you know, what the heck, man? Like, what am I exactly supposed to do here where I'm kind of trapped? And you can't, you also can't have the rats towards the middle. Because if you have the rats in the middle, then Hugo can't get his rats to go attack him. So, it's kind of like, you know, what the heck is going on here, man? But overall, it wasn't like a hard boss fight. It was just kind of confusing. And then eventually, I was just like, am I doing something wrong? Oh, no! And... I didn't, it was just a matter of fact of like, what the heck is going, I don't know. But anyway, like I said, it's a great game. I highly recommend it to anybody. Um, yeah, thank you guys.